Well, I can hardly wait to read the comments on this video. It's gonna go something like this. Damn techs put on weight during 2020. Also, you're making hunters look bad by hunting with spears. Which is really funny because crossbows, too high tech for bow season. Spears, too savage for bow season. Make up your mind. Also, be obligatory, high fence isn't really hunting. Have you tried it and saw how hard it is? Because this trip has been a long time in the making of failure. So with that all being said, I hope you guys are ready for your text grab near outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness. Howdy folks, text grab near here with text grab near outdoors. This spear is a little bit kinky. Why? Because on this episode, we make it weird. It is such a weird and difficult to describe feeling when you throw a spear back through time and gain on a chemical level in microcosm the understanding of your distant ancestry. It's the best approximation that we as modern humans can get. Crossbows, too high tech for bow season. Spears, addle addles, oh that's just too savage, people wouldn't like that. Well, I'm sorry, you're watching a spear hunting video, so I hope that you guys are going to enjoy this week's episode of Text Grab Near Outdoors, because we're making it weird. Went to Oklahoma with Tripper, managed to survive my return journey, managed to survive the hogs, the ticks, and the mosquitoes, chewed approximately 15 cans of Copenhagen between us, and we made it weird. Now, if you guys are in the market for some high-end hunting ammunition between 30-06 up to 505 Gibbs, check out my friends over at Aria Ballistic Engineering. And if you guys are in the market for some bow fishing equipment, you can use the code of TexGrabner in your checkout at 3RiversArchery.com. On orders over $100, it will give you free shipping. Also, if you're watching this later in the year after the summer, you can use the code of TexGrabner on all your Trad Life supplies over $100 to get free shipping. It's a constant code at 3RiversArchery.com to get ready for archery season. Unfortunately, as far as I know, Three Rivers no longer sells the Cold Steel Samburu Spears. Unfortunately, as far as I know, Cold Steel no longer sells the Samburu Spears at all. But you can get American Hunting Spears, which are my second favorite spear also. Anyways, while I'm at it, if you guys are looking to get into the Ethics Outsert Insert system, Use the code of TGO10 in your checkout at ethicsarchery.com and it will give you a discount of 10% on your final order. Now, who's ready to make it weird? Because in this episode, Tripper and me kill with sticks. I think I've wanted to spear a hog since I was about 12 years old and I read a magazine article about it. Ever since Tripper called me and said we had our dates confirmed, I'd been practicing on hay bales, throwing at clay pigeons to have a very focused, small target at reasonable ranges, and I'd been practicing on guard down on the river bottoms in the backwater, because by God, they're hard to hit. At the distance that you would use a spear, they are devastating. And because I'm somebody that nothing ever goes right for, I have to basically hone my craft. And after I got done practicing and got them resharpened up, you could shave with these cold steel Samburus. So I was ready to go. This trip's a bit of a vision quest, to be completely honest. Since my last adventure, I've let my body and mind kind of go to hell on me a little bit. And so this is about attempting to reclaim myself, both Derek and Tex. The tiger said, your son has been boasting. If he is stronger, let him kill me. If I am stronger, I will kill him. The brave Gilead. Now I sharpen spears obsessively. Here we go. 
I don't even know what to say. It's been a long ass time since I've actually had an adventure. Like a true adventure. So, we'll see how this goes. We are in Okima, Oklahoma, heading to Black Mountain. Hoping that it works out, that me and Tripper can spear pigs. But if it don't work out, we got two elephant guns. This is going to be way harder than what it seems like it should be. Because even if we are hunting high fence, not gonna lie to you, these pigs get shot at for a living. They got more PTSD than Tripper as an Iraq war veteran. On the green, he his shot. In a green? For some reason, people have absolutely no problem with calling it fishing when you're fishing in a farm pond and catching largemouth bass because God forbid that it's not a smallmouth caught out of Copperhead Creek on a fly rod. Of course, people do have a very dim view of high fence hog hunting. So it's up to you as to whether or not what we're doing is actually hunting. So it begins. Not gonna lie, I'm excited. I'm terrified. I look like a total doofus with a head cam. This may end up being crazy. Here's hoping we kill with sticks. I have failed to spear hogs on several occasions and in this you're going to see plenty of blown stalks. These might be high fence hogs but they are not tame. They come from the Canadian River. Now high fence hunting is controversial in itself and of course spear hunting is controversial in itself because when you see a spear kill on film it is so close, it is so intimate that you cannot shield yourself from what you're seeing and that bothers people. It really does and I do respect that because it's literally like watching Slaughterhouse film. It's happening but if I had to quantify the desire to spear hunt it would be a violent interpretation of a search for enlightenment to get in close and hurl a muscle-powered missile through the vitals of an animal and gain an understanding of what your distant ancestors felt and in doing so find enlightenment. Now you've got to walk slow now walk quiet because hogs are switched on. Now here's the funny thing everything is all fun and games until you are actually staring down a pig. 99.5% of the time you will jump them off their beds. But everything changes when that hog stands up and starts doing calculations on whether he wants a piece of you or not. And to be honest with you, this was terrifying. But as soon as I took a fighting grip on my spear and stood my ground. That hog decided it wasn't really worth it, but it was an absolutely visceral experience because these things are fast. And I'm only really gonna get one throw if he decides to come for me. Really good and really bad at the same time. That was intense, dude. I think it's funny they say it's easy. Not to over-dramatize this, because these hogs, they aren't massive. They don't have giant tusks. And 99 times out of 100, they're going to run away. How long will it take you to get you? 
but they're unpredictable, they deserve respect, and if you take a tusk in an artery in your inner thighs, you could bleed to death. So there is a level of unlikely danger. It rained all night, didn't sleep where the dam because I was too excited. Here I am, next morning, blowing stalks, missing pigs. Over the years I've learned if you're going to do this, you've got to be quiet, you've got to see them before they see you, and you've got to find a single pig in the right spot where you can actually make an approach on it, and you've got to find them not only where you can get to them, but where the wind is right. Now you might not think that high fence hunting is actually hunting. And that's all well and good, but I feel like the massive amounts of opportunities to blow stalks without any repercussions is vital to being able to actually get your hunting level up to the next level to learn how to actually still hunt and stalk. So Tripper saw this pig when he was on the other side of the rocks. I went around the other side and got up on top of the rocks. And to be honest with you, I was excited, but not in a million years did I expect this to actually work until I looked over, saw, and put my spear right through the top of the shoulder. And then it was all I could do not to fall over because I was so stunned that it actually worked. Now sometimes plans are just dumb enough to work. And I tell you what, you'll never lose a spear blood trail. All I can say is holy shit. And I'm honestly kind of stunned. I'm happy. That was visceral. Now spear hunting gets a bad reputation because it tends to be pretty low percentage. But honestly, I think it's because it's done at such close range that when you see it on film, you can't shield yourself from what you're seeing. Like, it is violent and it is primal. Well, honestly, at this point, I really don't know what to say. I'm kind of proud of myself. I basically counted two on this guy because I killed him like literally a spear and a half away up in them rocks. I don't know how well the film's going to turn out, but the reason he's facing this way is to make it more politically corrected because this is a two and a half inch wide, two in, two inch wide, two pound knife, and it was violent, it was primal, it was visceral, and I thought I was going to cry, but I still can't believe it, but I finally Speared a hog inside of five yards. But even though this is high fence, we're not going to pretend like it's not. These things get shot at for a living. So it is way harder than what you might think that it is. But Tripper's still got to get one. It is difficult to articulate and describe what it was like to take my first hog with a spear. 
it's really difficult and you probably wouldn't understand but we got my pig cleaned up and into the cooler and it was Tripper's turn to kill with sticks the good news was with all the rain we could move around like ghosts but we were gonna have to find the right pig you literally have way too many eyes and ears on you if you're trying to put a stalk on a group of pigs all it takes is for one to see you and the wind was getting a little bit erratic as it is I ended up seeing a pig before Tripper did for a change and it was his turn to get in close and he got really close. That pig was dead literally in seconds. I've been a lot of places. I've hunted a lot of things. I've been in the old Mexico. And uh, that was one of the shakiest things I've ever done. Like, I literally, I felt like it was my first year. I was shaking. And when I threw that spear, it was one of the most primal weird things that ever happened to me. I, I never really took it that serious. But I think I'm hooked now. It's it's uh it's definitely something that's a part of me. I, I when I threw a spear I felt it and it's uh I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Well we got Tripper's boar butchered up and it was my turn again. It was hot, it was humid, we both stunk like hogs, and it was just nasty. But it was my turn again. And we tried the wallows, but we couldn't find a lone boar. At least not one that was bedded up where we could get a spear on it and make an approach. It's way harder than you will ever give it credit for. But we went back up into the rocks, and we found a lone boar. And I had to wily coyote myself down this rock face onto a ledge and try and get within spear range without spooking this hog. And then I had to go down another ledge without spooking this hog. And to be completely honest, sometimes plans are just dumb enough to work and when it doesn't seem like it's going to work, you don't have time to get excited. But there I was, burning a hole through the lungs in the moment of truth. And it is so difficult to articulate the act of throwing the spear. It is like an emotional release because it is so intense. Oh, man. I can say is holy crap like all these years that I've been trying to get this done and wanting to and then when it's time to actually do it and you're up there with them and you're really close you honestly start thinking why did I want to do this again? Now this is high fence. We've said it before, we'll say it again. This is where we can do what we do. We have failed at this, Tripper and I, many, many times. Conditions weren't right. I was too loud. Things didn't work out. And today, I've got on two pigs 
and got spears through two pigs. And they're just a crazy smart animal. You literally gotta find them sleeping. It is a violent and visceral experience. And I'm just grateful that it worked out this time. And I guess I finally get to legitimately call myself a spear hunter. Because I finally had success. Nobody cares about you until you accomplish something. And with that being said, yeah, it's high fence. The truth is, there are a lot of people that come into places like where we're at and have no success with primitive weapons. So, I'm just grateful that things lined up for me to actually have this happen. Well, I had two pigs down with a spear, Tripper had one, and you may be wondering about the wounds that you saw on the pigs. Those are the exits where we threw through the vitals. The entry wounds were much more messy, and in the interest of respect for the animal, and because people wouldn't understand, we were careful to flip the pigs around. So we set up on a feeder with the last of the light with the 375 H and H. and Tripper wrecked this pig's day. And now it was day three. And today would prove to be a bit of a comedy of errors. Text grabbing your programming as usual because I had burnt all my luck yesterday. Too much had gone right on Wiley Coyote Outdoors. So, I feel like I kept myself together pretty well when it came to throwing the spears and handling it. And I know that I was kind of somber and a little bit in shock that things actually worked. But I also felt like I'd make a complete ass of myself if I started howling at the moon on film in the middle of the day, even if I really wanted to. It was a hell of an experience hunting hogs with a spear. But we got a little bit too ambitious because we had two pigs down with a spear for me and a pig down with a spear and a pig down with a 375 for Tripper and we still had a half a day left to hunt. So we decided we were going to take my 458 in there and go after a really big one. Walk in the rocks, walk in the creek beds. But the problem was the big ones don't get big by letting you shoot at them. And so we had no problem getting on littler hogs, but we were looking for something in the 200 to 250 pound range, because it is a 458 after all. Now the night before we got Tripper's pig out, got it in the cooler, and we didn't show it to you because it was a mess, because he hit it in the neck with a 375. And then we got down to the corner of the paddock, and here was a boar, massive boar, in a rock. And at this point, all skill is in vain when the devil pisses in your musket. Yesterday morning, I threaded the needle with a spear between rocks to throw through a pig's shoulder and hit him in the heart. Today, with a 458, I blasted a rock and shot behind him. And he ran off without a scratch on him. But I tell you what, I bring you reality, and that's just how it went down, no matter how embarrassing it was. Now, food wasn't the sole motivation for this adventure, but it is part of it. And now that I'm back home at the farm walk-in cooler, that is wild boar, captive swine, but that cold steel spear dumps so much blood out of those pigs when you throw a spear through the vitals that this here is pork loin from a feral hog that came out slaughter white just like that slaughterhouse white because 
the devastation that happens when you put a spear where it needs to go, it's literally just like if you took and shot a pig in the head for pig killing time and bled it like old school butchering. Now, not to be overly graphic about this, but the first hog, this is where I threw through the shoulder over the boulder went through the whole shoulder blade and anybody that's hunted hogs knows that's a stout bone I've sent a grizzly stick through it before and obviously I only have one heart because this hog it was just an absolute mess inside because I hit him high shoulder but the good news about spear hunting meat is that it comes out, at least in this case, looking slaughterhouse white. Probably going to keep these loins, but I'm probably going to take my hams and my shoulders and make some bratwurst. It was very important to me to retrieve a heart from a pig that I killed to eat. I cut the valves off and I buried them in the yard to give it back to nature because when you're making it weird, might as well make it weird. It's very difficult to describe what it's like to throw a spear back through time and gain an understanding of your distant ancestry. It's something that I wanted to do for a very long time. And when you're actually faced with it in those moments, scared of failure, scared of the animal, because they can be dangerous, you wonder, why did I even want to do this? And then you throw and then you understand. Was it challenging? Yeah. It's up to you whether you feel like I have accomplished anything or not. Because no matter whether I like it or not, some of you are going to tell me. But I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this week's episode of Texas Grab Your Outdoors. I would like to think that I finally get to call myself a spear hunter. As always, God bless all my sports of America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Please check out my friends over at ThreeRiversArchery.com. Thank you very much to those of you who know all the law enforcement, you good cops out there, and those of you who served in the military ready to die for freedom anywhere. Thanks for watching Tax Scrub Near Outdoors. Oh, and I can't believe I missed that hog at 15 yards with my 458. Everything would have been fine if I'd got a little bit closer, but I smacked a rock with the bullet along the way. But, while I am not proud of it, that's how it went down, and that's why you're seeing it. Because I have nothing but my honesty and my integrity. And let's face it, I've made a career out of my failures. Of course, I have a feeling that I'm not going to be allowed to forget about that hog that I missed at 15 yards with my 458. 